In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I made the 6 into 4 exhaust system for my Kawasaki Z1 Super 6. I bought a brand new Z1 exhaust system from Z1 Parts in California. It's really nice and just perfect for cutting up. So the first thing I did was grip the header in my vise with some soft cloth to protect it. Using my hacksaw, cut off the four headers. And here's one of the headers sawed off from the rear silencer. We'll put that to one side for now because we're going to make the collectors from some stainless steel tube. I bought some stainless steel tube that slides nicely over the headers. So the next thing to do is to cut it up into lengths about two inches long. And here's the first five bits cut to make one collector. With all 10 bits cut, I go over to my lathe so I can machine the front surfaces dead square. They're pretty good as they are rough sawn, but I like to clean them up with a lathe tool to make them really nice. And that feels just perfect. With all 10 pieces of tube machined, the next thing I need to do is make the front part of the collector. So I place three pieces on there, space them out evenly, and mark around with a pen. So I mark one side, then I mark the other side, then centre the centre part just by eye, and mark around that as well. So the next thing I need to do is cut out the centre hole and the two side pieces. So the easy way to do the centre is to weld that piece on first, put it in my lathe and then bore it out. I decide to cut the metal from the edges first, so I grip the piece of sheet stainless steel in my vise and I use my hacksaw to cut along the edge and by cutting close to the jaw it's much less noise. I keep repositioning them apart so I can cut out the very last piece of metal with my hacksaw and then I get my half round file and true it all up nicely so it fits nicely onto the piece of tube. Well, that's the first one filed to size and it fits perfect. I'm really pleased with that. So now we can get on with the other end. With all four ends cut and filed to size and fitting nicely on the piece of the pipe, it's time to centralise the centre piece and weld them in place. I also finished the side of the collector where there's two pipes as well. This was a simple case of cutting and filing. So now I'm going to weld the central input tube onto the front face of the collector by gripping it in my vise and putting four spot welds with my TIG welder. Well, that's two tack welds completed, so I just check it's all true and square, which it is, ready to put on the other two tack welds, and then I can transfer it to the chuck on my lathe and bore out the centre. That's the first stage of the trepanning operation to remove the centre portion and now we can clean up the edges to make it smooth with the inside of the ball. With the central portion machined out, I position it in my vise and weld the outer and the inner pipes to the back plate making sure I weld all the way around so there's no leaks. 
I then take all the parts out into the garden to use my angle grinder to trim all the edges true and make it smooth, ready for the next stage. I really enjoy this part of the job, using my angle grinder to fashion the edges how I want them and make everything smooth and nice. Well that's starting to look really good, I'm well pleased with that. I go back to the garage, as I'm walking past the kitchen there's a lovely smell, Tracy's cooking more cupcakes and they're in the oven, they're not quite cooked so I have to hang around for them to be cooked and I can take one to try, and they were just perfect. With the parts all cleaned up, it's time to make the centre section. So I get a piece of cardboard, roll it round, and cut it out with my pen knife to the right size to make a template. I drew round the original template onto a fresh piece of card, making it very slightly bigger, because it's best to make it big, and then you can trim it back to size afterwards with your angle grinder once it's bent to shape. The next thing I do is draw around the template onto some 1.6mm thick stainless steel and use my marker pen to mark out the profile. With both the parts marked out, it's time to go back out in the garden and use my angle grinder fitted with a 1mm thick slitting wheel to cut out the shapes. So with both parts cut out, I go back into the garage and start shaping them around a piece of bar gripped in my vise. I use my 2 kilogram hide mallet. It's just perfect. It doesn't scratch the material or cause creases or, or hammer marks, so it's just great for this sort of thing. With both parts shaped, I gradually trim them back so they fit perfect, ready for welding. With both the collector boxes welded together, I put them back in my vise and start filing up all the edges to make them nice and smooth, because they're going to be visible from the side of the bike and I want them to look just perfect. I finish off with some Abronet cloth. This is amazing stuff, it cuts really well and doesn't clog up. After using several grades of Abronet, starting off at about 80 grit and coming down to 600 grit, the collectors look amazing. I'm really pleased. So it's time to trial fit them onto the exhaust pipes. The collectors slid on perfectly to the pairs of rear silencers, holding them together at the front. And now, with three inlets each side, gives me my six cylinder, six into four exhaust system. I bolt on both silencers to the frame mounting points and lift them up at the front and the collectors line up perfectly to where the headers are going to be. So I fit the headers and it all fits and I am really pleased. It looks amazing. With all the bolts tightened, the next thing to do is to fit the standard embellishers around the joins. These are stainless steel and crimped in place that I'd removed from the original system. Here they are fitted, it gives it a really original look. With the exhaust system fitted, the next thing I needed to do was to increase the size of the baffles because they were too restrictive and they had some wadding in it I also needed to remove to make them sound nicer. The 
baffles are really long and quite thin in diameter. So what I need to do is cut off flush with the end of the baffle pipe and then replace it with a bigger diameter pipe, but much shorter in length. And this will give it a deeper sound. I'll grip the baffles in the vise one at a time and cut off the end plate. But I keep the pieces of the tube because it might be useful for making other exhaust system parts. When the four baffle tubes have been sawn off, I look for some suitable tube that's larger to weld back on four short versions. I grip the larger diameter pipe in the vise and saw off four pieces about two inches long each. Then I take them over to my lathe to machine the end square. After cleaning up the ends, I notice they look a bit big in diameter really, but I haven't got any slightly smaller tube. But that's not a problem. I'll just slice it down the length, squeeze it in slightly, make it round again, and then weld it up. And then when I bore the end caps out, I'll push them in and weld them in, and it'll be just fine. So I'll just mark two lines on my Sharpie pen, just by eye. And there we go, I'm taking a bit of metal out the whole length, so when I squeeze that down, it'll reduce the diameter. That's better, that looks just perfect. I then grip the split tubes in my vise and gently squeeze the gap together for welding. Well, there's the first one done. That'll do nicely. With the four tubes welded, the next thing I need to do is bore out the hole in the end cap so they're just a nice push fit ready for welding. Nearly there, not quite though, just a tiny bit more to come out. And it fits perfect. The next thing I need to do is remove the paint with my blowtorch and a wire brush ready for welding. With the paint removed, I weld around here to secure the end plate to the new baffle tube. The parts are now ready for painting, so I take them out into the garden and warm them up in my barbecue. It's brilliant to warm things up for painting. I use heat resistant epoxy paint. It goes on really nice and you can bake it in the barbecue at about 150 degrees C for about half an hour and it is glass hard. I return the baffles to the barbecue, shut the door and give them a good old bake at 150. Then, after they've cooled down, they're all ready to put back in the exhausts and they look just perfect.
Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. My second Z1 Super 6 is almost ready for its first start, so that might be in a new video. Anyway, see you all soon, and don't forget to subscribe. Hello? Yep, yep, this is Alan. Oh, hi. Yeah, yeah, I was expecting your call. What, you really enjoyed the video? Oh, you're disappointed there was no use of the Swiss Army knife. Well, I'll try and use it next time. Oh, but you liked it because there's no startups. Well, that's just perfect, isn't it? Okay, then. Bye, Greta. Bye.